In this video, we are going to understand why Canada produces so little oil despite having huge oil reserve. Why can't Canada produce as much oil as the United States? First, let us see where does Canada stand in the global oil and gas industry in terms of production. As per the CAPP website, CAPP stands for Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. Canada is the fourth largest producer of oil in the world and it is the sixth largest producer of natural gas in the world. In terms of oil reserves, Canada has the third largest proven oil reserves in the world, only behind Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Now if you look at Canada's daily oil production, here is the graph. Last year and this year production has been more. Last year due to post-pandemic economic revival and this year due to Russia-Ukraine war, Canada's production of oil is expected to rise up to 5.85 million barrels of oil per day. Now if you look at Canada's oil production per day, when compared to United States, Saudi Arabia and Russia, it is less. Although this graph is from 2018 but it still remains valid. United States oil production per day at an average is around 18 to 19 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia produces around 10 to 12 million barrels per day. And Russia also produces similar to Saudi that is around 11 to 12 million barrels per day. But then as you know, due to the Russia-Ukraine war, the US and its allies and many European countries have placed a ban on the import of Russian crude oil and certain petroleum products, natural gas and coal. And because of that, oil production in Russia has decreased to 9.7 million barrels per day. A similar move has been made even by Saudi Arabia and OPEC countries. Even they have cut their oil production by 2 million barrels per day despite United States request. Actually, if you see, Russia has been actively coordinating oil production with OPEC and other non-OPEC producers. But anyhow, the point is, Canada's oil production per day is very low despite having third largest oil reserve in the world. Now, if you look at Canada's population, it is roughly around 38 million or 3 crore 85 lakhs. Canada's own oil consumption is less than its production. Although this data is from 2020, even if you take an average, you will find Canada's domestic oil consumption is around 2 to 2.5 million barrels per day. That means half of what it produces. So where does the remaining oil goes? Well, the US is the main destination for Canada's oil exports. But it is not the only country. US accounted for 90% of Canadian oil export. Apart from the US, Canada also exports oil to Europe, China as well as India. And right now Canadian oil is available at low cost. So India is snapping up cheap Canadian oil. A total of 3.3 million barrels of Axis Western Blend. This is a crude oil grade produced in the oil sands of Alberta. Is scheduled to arrive in India next month in November after departing from the US Gulf. But anyhow, US is the main destination for overall Canada's oil exports. Now let's understand the main question. Why Canada produces so little oil? The first thing that you have to understand is that it is not that Canada doesn't have the technical skill or the technology to extract oil. Canada can easily become the world leading oil producer. As you may know, they have unlimited access to the US financial system, which is the world's largest. And their own financial system is good enough to make them world largest oil producer. Even then, the Canadian oil companies don't produce as much oil as they should. And there are a couple of reasons behind it. The first one is, as I've mentioned, Canada's population is roughly around 38 million. This size of population is insufficient for a country to become leading producer. If you see two or three big metropolitan cities of India combined together has this much of population. So the population of Canada is a direct reflection of the amount of industries that exist in the country. And as you know, oil forms a primary component for almost every industry. And as it is, Canada's oil production is twice its consumption. To become leading world producer of crude oil, the country's oil output has to be at least more than 10 million barrels per day. But then as we saw, Canada's domestic demand is around 2.5 million barrels per day. So it is not at all in the interest of the Canadian oil industry to produce more oil. Because if you increase the supply of anything, then automatically the prices go down. Its value falls. Since oil is an essential commodity, its demand will always be high. So if at all the Canadian oil industry increases their oil production, then they will flood the market with cheap oil. And that is not going to be profitable for Canadian oil companies and their investors. Now, the next immediate question that may come in your mind is, well, if the domestic consumption is met, Canada can export oil and earn huge revenue from it. Basically, they can sell oil just like Saudi Arabia does. Now, the answer to this question is, you have to understand that the quality and grade of crude oil that is produced in Canada is quite heavy. And always remember, 
If the crude oil is heavy, then it is considered as low quality because it has high viscosity and high sulfur content, and that makes it more costly to refine heavy crude oil. The lighter the crude oil is, the better it is for high-end value products like petrol and diesel. Now Canada has enough refineries to meet its own domestic consumption, but the vast majority of Canadian heavy crude oil goes to United States for refining. Here is a graph that will tell you that the total input of foreign crude in U.S. refineries is primarily dominated by one single country, and that is Canada. And the mode of transportation of Canadian crude oil to United States is through pipeline, rail network, and waterways. Now, this cross-border petroleum trade between United States and Canada has significantly developed both countries' economies and their energy security. However, it is United States who calls the shots. See, just because there is an invisible line between United States and Canada, that doesn't mean both the countries are different. If you look at the people, especially white people, both in United States and Canada, they act in a very similar way in their day-to-day -day life. Both the countries have similar kind of culture and thought process, except few minor differences like speaking accent and temperature weather conditions. Apart from that, everything about US and Canada is same. And Canada listens to United States in every aspect, be it economically, militarily, everything. Yes, Canada might have its own flag and sovereignty, but they don't decide their foreign policies themselves. Even Canada's internal policies, to a lot extent, is very much controlled by the US government. Have you seen the strength of Canadian armed forces? It roughly has around 70 to 75,000 personnel. Such a vast country with tiny population, and the strength of the military is almost non-existent. Do you think that is called a sovereign country? Canada only exists because the United States allows it to do so. And if at all Canada ever goes against the wishes of the United States, it will no longer be a country. But nevertheless, on face value, yes, Canada has its own flag and it is an independent country. Now, if you look at this graph, Canada exports crude oil to Europe, China and even India. But you will see 90% of it goes to United States. So the answer to your question, why doesn't Canada extracts more oil and export to other countries? Well, United States is buying most of it. And United States has the world's largest as well as the strongest financial system as of now. So if Canada has access to the US financial system as well as US market, then why are they going to take the burden of extracting more oil and send it to faraway countries in different continents? And more importantly, any oil and gas that needs to be exported from Canada has to first travel all the way down to the United States Gulf Coast, because that is where most of the refineries are. So the Canadian oil first goes to United States Gulf Coast, and from there it gets loaded onto a tanker and then it travels across the Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. So in a way, you can say that the Canadian oil industry is stuck with United States, or maybe they are lazy to not explore and expand, wherein they are getting everything from the neighboring country. Or maybe the United States government is not allowing them to grow and reach out to other customers and form trading partners, which if you see is part of country's foreign policy. This is where I say all the answers to these questions can be understood only through deep study of Canada-US relations and how it has been defined. Now, there is one more reason as to why Canadian oil companies do not produce more oil. It is said that most of Canada's natural reserves are found in Muskeg, or you can say in the northern part of Canada, which is also the Arctic region. Geologically, Canada is blessed with natural resources. Now, we all know that Arctic region is rich in fossil fuel reserves. Hence, by that logic, Canada must explore these northern regions, right? But then it is often said that, due to lack of infrastructure and investment, it is difficult and almost impossible to access any of these reserves. If at all lack of infrastructure and investment is the reason, then you must ask yourself a question. Isn't Canada a highly developed nation with one of the largest economies in the world? And as I've previously mentioned, they also have access to the US financial system. If both the United States and the Canadian government want, they can easily fund the infrastructure. After all, it is going to be in their national interest to have surplus and move towards energy independency. But they are not going to do it. Because there are strong environmental NGOs who are against these oil companies, but they form a strong voter base of the US Democrats and Canada's Liberal Party. The fact of the matter is Canada's economy and oil production is choked by hyper-environmentalism and activism. And the same problem you will find in the United States as well, but in Canada it is extreme. They are called pressure groups, and they are doing everything they can to block any form of fossil fuel production in the United States and Canada. One good example is the Keystone XL pipeline. Last year, the US President Joe Biden had to shut it down. 
Why did he do that? It's simple. He had to please environmentalist NGOs and other pressure groups who form core voter base of the Democratic Party. You must understand that any kind of development will have a cost. Infrastructure investment, it creates job, strengthens economy. At the same time, it also affects the environment. It is very difficult to balance both. And quite often, the environmentalists turn out to be hypocrites. They are part of the left ecosystem. While they don't want industries to expand in the name of climate change, but then they want the latest version of iPhone to express their environmental concerns on the internet. Of course, billionaires, big corporations are greedy. They want profit. Even you would not invest anywhere if you don't get profit. But then these big corporations, no matter what their motives are, they also give jobs. They also provide an opportunity for millions of people to earn a living and live a life. That's how the system works. You cannot topple the system with some revolutionary thoughts and create chaos. It is a difficult choice to make. You have to balance the act. So environmental NGOs, activists and other pressure groups, basically the left ecosystem, they have a strange way of emotionally charging and influencing people. They will even give you statistics to support their argument. I'm not saying stats are useless. But the way people apply statistics today, it is concerning. They already have their mind made up before applying stats. Stats are just numbers. You can present it however you want. And it all starts in colleges and universities. If you see, education is in the hands of the left ecosystem. You can easily manipulate someone during their initial stages of life when they are learning. So that is how it all starts. Canada is a liberal country. However, they are part of the left liberal ecosystem. See, liberalism alone cannot develop until it is supported by an ecosystem of which it is a part and shares common ground. Even in biology, you must have studied, an ecosystem is the relationship of an organism with its environment. The organism is a living thing and the environment is a non-living thing. Similarly, living organism is represented by human factor and the non-living thing is represented by institutions. The living part of the leftist liberal ecosystem are individuals, intellectuals, authors, writers, teachers, historians, actors, social activists, etc. And the institution of the left liberal ecosystem includes academic institutions, universities, bureaucracy, NGOs, etc. So people are liberal in Canada, but the environment is part of the left ecosystem. So Canada currently is a left liberal country. Anyhow, so these are the reasons why Canada produces very little oil. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.